Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 27, October 21st, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample, SB1970. Miriam. Miriam. There is no good reason for you to be here. But your intransigence requires that I detain you until you give me information I can act upon. The location of the artifact, perhaps, or the whereabouts of your leader, Bartle Shig. Just a little something to give Minister Goebel some encouragement that we are on the right track. How about a nice hug? He looks so sad in all his photographs. <laughs> yes, he does, doesn't he? Perhaps you could pay him a visit yourself. He likes beautiful women. Actresses, musicians. Pirates. That's right, pirates. Pirates of the Edelweiss. Isn't that what you kids call yourselves? It's very amusing. And illegal, of course. Breaking Hitler's laws is half the fun. Oh, I imagine so. I imagine you were having a wonderful time just before we captured you on your search of friends. And that's the end of it. Damn it. Why can't we sustain the signal for more than just a few minutes? I need to relax. That's not the issue. This is dangerous work. These memories aren't in your bloodline. That's why it's not holding. There's got to be a solution. Uh, any idea what they mean by the artifact? I've heard it a few times now. Not sure. I don't think Miriam knew either. Not much comes into her mind when she asks about it. But she's protecting the other members of her group. The Edelweiss pirates or something? Yeah. Bartol Schink. Have we looked him up? No, we can. We should. Put your intern on it. <laughs> right. High priority. Yeah. <sighs> this isn't getting any easier. Jesus. Hello? Hi, Seamus. It's Mom. Hey. How are you? Yeah! Hi, Carl. How's Seamus? Great. We were out shopping for school clothes. Yeah. The summer just sped by. They all do. I never seem to notice. No windows in the office. Right. Trapped in the lab. So, did you need to talk? Yes, sorry. I was curious about your mother, actually. Oh. Okay. How much did she talk about the war when you were growing up? Not often. Bits and pieces. Why? I was doing some research last week about World War II, and something came up about the Edelweiss pirates, or the Navajos, and your mother's name popped up. Really? That's an odd coincidence. Does that, does any of that ring a bell? Yeah. Mom ran with that group while the war was on. There were a group of kids who wanted to avoid the Hitler Youth programs, but in later years they escalated their activities to, uh, bigger ideas like vandalism and sabotage. But why Navajos? And pirates? Just some of the names they used. Navajos, Edelweiss pirates, you know, kids. There were little pins, little white flowers. I may still have hers. That's interesting. And this is for work, researching my mother? Not exactly, but... Sorry, I can't talk about it. Right. You never could. Hey, don't. I didn't mean to be flippant. No. Don't mind me. All for the greater good. I like to think so. All right. Damn it! Five months of this bullshit! We're floundering. Take it easy, Eileen. You're just stressed. I am not stressed. I am frustrated. I'd like to go again this afternoon. No. There is no reason to rush this. We're hardly rushing. We're running into the same wall over and over again. Why can't we push through? Why can't you keep me in the Animus longer than two minutes? Because surrogate genetic memory data is fragile. The EEG is exploding and your brain is doing too much work. The longer you stay in, the more damage it does. It's even possible that... Possible that... It's possible the memories we're digging into could eventually overwrite your own. Like information on a tape drive. There's just not enough space in your head to do both. Here I come to save the day! <laughs> Good afternoon, all. Did you invite him? No, but you did. Remember? That was months ago, Warren. What do you need? I wanted to stop by. 
check on your progress. Well, apparently it's still too dangerous to keep me under for more than a few minutes. Hmm. I always suspected that would be your biggest hurdle. The genetic memory sequencing is the easy part, if time-consuming. But the replay, that's something else. Yes? Let's think this through. My subjects are diving into their own genetic memories, so the information is already encoded in their heads. Which means the animus has less work to do, less computing, less parsing. Right. So to get your surrogate data working, to let people experience foreign memories, it will take a hell of a lot more processing power than anyone has. Even Abstergo Industries. Ideally, we'd like to build an external processor that mirrors as many brain functions as possible. Something to handle the calculations. But the cost and upkeep of that would be astronomical. Let me see what I can do. I have some sway with Lillian. We won't build Rome in a day. But if we focus on the pretty buildings first, maybe we'll achieve something. Thank you, Warren. Till next, folks.
Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 37, August 9th, 1981. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. Open! Good morning, Miss Kurtz. You look well, considering the circumstances. Are you rested? Hmm. Have you eaten? Your friends are dead, Miriam. Bartle Schink and all his navios, his Edelweiss pirates, executed for five counts of murder. Which has a trial. You must be proud. There was no need! They were scum! All of them! You hear me? All of you are scum! 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 <laughs> I still so clearly know. She didn't break, did they? You have nothing! Quiet, girl! You don't have the artifact! If you did, you wouldn't be talking to me at all! Now you lay seat! I said no! Open your eyes. Can you hear me? I mean, I mean. Powers off! Get the position in here! Step aside, son! I mean, talk to me. Can you open your eyes? Where? Oh, God. No spots. towards a speech in honor of Dr. Eileen Bach's premature retirement. When I first learned of Dr. Bach's unfortunate accident, I couldn't help but feel a great sense of loss at... No. No, no. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Eileen Bach has and always will be a friend and colleague. When I first learned of her unfortunate accident, I was shocked, of course. To see any friend injured in such a way is deeply upsetting. And to further learn that her injuries were severe enough to force a premature conclusion to her brilliant career, well... I would not wish that fate on anyone. But, if there is any solace to be found in her accident, it may be this, that she was injured in service of her research, in service of work that she cherished most dearly. And it is thanks to her, it is due to her diligence, that some of the mysteries of genetic memory have been further illuminated. And while it is true that work on her project, the surrogate initiative, as she called it, has been temporarily halted, the copious amount of work she has done over the past three years has been incredibly valuable. So while her work has been suspended for the time being, her legacy will most certainly live on. Quiet, Joan! Quiet! 